Ready. I'm ready. I won't say much. All right. So I'm going to put everyone on mute. Um, but throughout the call, you're absolutely welcome to ask questions. If there's anything you don't understand um, or you want clarification on, please ask so that you can continue buying business. So I'm going to mute everyone. So we've got no background noise. All right. Away we go. So I'm just going to share my screen with you so we can get started. All right. Okay, well, you're all here because you obviously have some sort of feeling that natural cycle planning could really work for you. And I'm here to tell you it absolutely can. I've been doing this system for about two years now and uh, the results have been quite um, surprising to me in my own business. And I want to share with you some of the things that I've learned along the way that really seem to work. And this, they're a combination of intuitive and analytical approaches to planning. So just before we begin, um, as I said, this is interactive, so please ask questions as we go. All you need to do is unmute yourself at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen on Zoom, and you can just click that little microphone if you need to ask a question. Um, and you need your pen and paper because uh, you're going to be writing down stuff that applies to your business. Start thinking now about how you want to plan out your next 12-month cycle. And the good news is Aries starts on Monday, so you haven't missed out yet. Monday is the beginning of the natural year. So before the Gregorian chat, uh, calendar was invented, um, we used to go by the natural year, which actually starts on the 21st of March. So some of you might even feel that at the beginning of each year in January, you can't quite get it together to go, oh, I'm ready to go for the new year. And that's because things are still starting to break down in January, February and March in preparation for the new year that starts at the end of March. So by breakdown, I mean that things stop working, momentum might to start to slow down, you might start to make changes because you're starting to realise that what you've been doing is no longer working and it needs to be reinvented. Uh, so that's the whole purpose of January, February, March. So now we're almost ready to really launch with Aries. So very briefly, I'm going to explain why you would do natural cycle planning. So the first reason is, is it's actually sustainable. And by sustainable, I mean, because we have a different focus each month of the year, and I'm going to explain this a little bit later with the astrological cycles, each month has a theme and therefore a focus which means that by the end of the 12 month cycle, you have covered all your bases. You have addressed all of the elements that are required to run a sustainable, successful business. Now what most people do when they're running a business is they favor certain things. They might favor marketing or they might shun marketing and do no marketing, or they might favor working with their numbers or they might favor client delivery. But, if it's not addressing all of those bases, all of the elements that come together to create a successful business, then at some stage, there's gonna be a breakdown. So this approach, covering all bases, makes your business sustainable. It's also, as I mentioned, intuitive and analytical. So it's also sustainable for us because we're using all parts of ourselves. We're using both parts of our brain. The typical planning, business planning methods are very analytical and you might have had a go at writing a business plan yourself once or twice in your time and it's a very painful process even if you are analytically minded. <laughs> so I've, that's actually been my background. I'm, my background is as a project manager so you, I used to write plans for a living and I've come to balance out the two approaches. So the analytical and the intuitive work beautifully together. It's also low stress. Why is it low stress? Because natural cycle planning is both simple and slow. It's so easy in business, right? As we get up, caught up in running our day-to-day -day business to get 
basically go at a much higher speed than is actually good for us or our business. So if you consider the, the rate at which a seed germinates and grows into a seedling and then a small tree and then a large tree, you know, you're talking years and years to develop that kind of foundation and strength as a fully grown tree. Your business is no different and nor are you. So we must keep it simple and slow. And the cycles are beautifully designed for doing that. Co-creation. So co-creation is something that is um, a bit of a buzzword in business at the moment, especially in conscious business. In relation to natural cycle planning, what I mean is that co-creation with the planet, with our environment. So it's not all about us. We're actually being receptive and listening to the sun, the moon, the earth, the seasons. What, is, what are they all telling us about when to do what? Now, farmers have been doing this, you know, for a very long time. They've been even predicting the weather based on astrological cycles since the 1800s. But farmers knew way before that when to plant their crops for the greatest yield. And we can apply the same principles in our business. So we need to know what to do and when. And all of this put together actually equals a higher success rate over the long term. So if you're looking for overnight success, natural cycle planning isn't for you because this is about long term sustainable growth. But over the long term, you have a much higher success rate because A, you'll be able to keep going sustainably and your business has everything it needs with all the bases covered to continue growing too. All right, so enough of that. Unless anyone has any questions, we're gonna get cracking. All right, so natural cycles, what are they? We have moon cycles. So this is about full moon, quarter moon, new moons, eclipses, anything to do with the moon. The moon is very close to the earth. It's closer to the earth than the sun. Therefore, it has quite an impact over our emotional nature. And our emotional nature is what informs, especially for women, informs our buying patterns. But certainly for men too. So this is something that can really be leveraged in, uh, in your sales process and your marketing. Astrological cycles, so the 12 signs of the zodiac, which begins with Aries, as I mentioned. Seasonal cycles, which I'm not going to go too much into today because depending on the, the seasons are different. So we won't go too much into that, but absolutely you can plan by the seasons too. And since we're all ladies today, we can do menstrual planning. So this is where we really want to tap into our personal environment. So our bodies, where are we at? And even if you don't have menstruation, you know, you're at the stage of your life where that's no longer part of your life, you can still have a natural rhythm to go by. That's your personal rhythm. And so that's something that you can tap into to optimize how you work in your business. All right, so Let's look at um, we're going to begin with excuse me one second. We're going to begin with the simple and slow business planning method that I use and I'm going to share with you. So it's all surrounding your intention and your actions. Now, an intention is, is basically a goal, but I prefer the word intention because it does have a slightly different meaning. Intention is a more embodied sense of what you stand for in this present moment and what you want to create from your current state of being. So in business terms, this means that you actually want to set your targets and your goals tangible outcomes that you want to achieve each month or each year based on what feels true and what feels good for you. So now is the time to just start to tune into 
this next 12 month cycle? Where do you want to be in 12 months time? How do you want, what does that feel like to you? And from that feeling, can you see what your business looks like? Now I'm quite emphasizing the feeling aspect of this because traditional goal setting is very heady. It's purely analytical. And if we're operating from the head up, we're going to be in the field of possibilities and anything could happen. So we can set any goal we like, but is it really true in our bodies? Is it really true for us? So really start to feel where you want to be in 12 months time. What does your business look like? How would you define that as an outcome? Now the outcome could be financial. It could be, I want to be earning $10,000 per month consistently in my business. It could be something like um, I want to develop a collaboration project with a colleague. And it could be something like um, I actually want to establish a fully online presence in my business in 12 months time. It could be any of those things. There's no right or wrong. But setting your course now is very important. Because otherwise, month to month, as each month rolls by, what's the overarching guidepost? You know, this is setting your sale for the rest of the year. Now, once you have your intention for the year, you also want to do it for this coming month. So this coming month of Aries is, I'm just going to stop sharing for a minute. So this coming month of Aries is all about action, courageous action. So taking steps outside your comfort zone to initiate new things. Now, after this breaking down process that we've been through January, February, March, as I said before, you might've been feeling that certain things aren't really working anymore. Things need to change. It's basically that time of year where you're pruning the tree. So as you prune the tree, there's still going to be some tree left. So what's left? What is still standing? What's important for you to take with you into the next cycle? So this is what you want to really capitalize on in areas. You want to go, okay, what was working? I'm going to run with that. And what wasn't working, I might actually initiate a new approach. So this is where you want to get really, really clear what worked in the last 12 month cycle and what didn't. So this can be anything from how you're operating in your business. You know, is it working for you to have a weekly schedule that you stick by every single week or is that not working? Is um, your way of actually delivering your products and services actually working in the same way? Anything that you see is start working or not working? Anything that's not clearly in either column, you can just let that unfold. But anything that's clearly working or not working, you want to write that down and run with what you've got. So Aries, your intention is going to be very action-based. What bold actions are you taking this coming month? So from Monday, you actually know exactly where you're starting. So Aries is extremely um, bold, daring, uh, warrior-like. So really leading the pack out the front, going right, taking taking the tribe to new frontiers it's like what can we do that we've never done before this aries wants to crack the status quo aries cannot stand complacency so where have you become complacent in your business that's what needs a shake up so you can set your intention around aries for this month so once you have your intention, whether it's monthly or 12 monthly, you actually need to break it down. 
you need to break it down into actions. So what is it actually going to take for you to fulfill this intention? So your intention is the finish line. What are the signposts or goalposts along the way that are going to tell you that you'll actually get to that finish line? So that's the first essential part of natural cycle planning. Intention, then breaking it down into actions. See the A to B and then the signposts along the way. Very simple. But if you get it, if you pinpoint it and you really feel it as true, your chances of getting there are far higher than they would be otherwise if you just planned from your head or if you just plan from feeling alone with no action or analysis about what it's going to take to get there. So the next step in simple and slow business planning is co-creation with, with the soul of your business and the earth. So this is where you really want to, this is an intuitive practice where you really want to separate yourself from your business because you are not your business. Your business is a separate entity with its own path and its own life force and you are the custodian of that business. So you need to be receptive to what it's needing each cycle. So this is a process where you're, it's not all about you and what you want and overlaying your desires onto your business. This is really asking your business what it needs now. Also, you want to really be feeling your place on this planet. This is really about what you stand for. Where do you stand? What's your place in your community? What's your place on this earth? And when you feel that it's much easier to take action because you have that direction, you have that focus, you have the purpose already laid out for you. You also want to align with the cycles. So depending on where the moon is, depending on what sign of the zodiac you're in, you actually need to really tune in and go, okay, so if I fully align with the current energy or the energy that's coming, so it could be a full moon energy or it could be Aries or Taurus energy coming, what does that inspire in me to create? So I'm gonna be talking a little bit more about the cycle specifically in a moment. And then of course you want to actually review your and track your progress. So once you have these actions in place, you actually need to go, okay, am I getting there? Am I ticking these off? You must keep referring back to your actions throughout the year because every time you look at them, of course you need to write them down, every time you look at them and review them, you're giving them more energy. So again, your energy is aligned with the creation of what you set out to achieve. So the more you check in with your intention and actions throughout the months and the year, the higher your chance of getting there. <clears throat> All right. Any questions before I keep soldiering on? Not yet? Okay. So let's talk about business in balance and what we mean by the astrological cycles of planning. So I call this business in, plan in balance planning by the four elements. Now the four elements are fire, air, earth and water and they also align with the zodiac, so the star signs 
in astrology. And what they inform us of is what task to take and when. So as I mentioned, Aries, the start of the zodiac, coming up. It's a fire sign. So that's the bold, creative energy. And it's all about initiation. So what am I beginning? What am I kicking off for this whole 12-month cycle? What's new? And as we move through the zodiac throughout the year, you can see that the focus changes. And the focus is also based on the element of that month. So we need to really start to align our actions each month with these themes. Now, in terms of practicalities, if you haven't actually got your natural cycle planner this year yet, um, which you don't have to use, you can use any method um, that works for you when it comes to um, planning using the natural cycles. As you can see, mine, mine's up here on the wall. So I have mine easily, easy to refer to all the time. Um, and you'll also notice that it's not actually very cluttered. So I don't have heaps of stuff on my, on my planners. And the reason for that is because I like simple and I like clean. And by clean, I mean um, uncluttered and very focused. So I might only have a few things, events or milestones marked on my calendar each month. So this is not the kind of calendar that you need to fill up and fill each day like a lot of people do with their calendars and their, their work diaries and stuff. This is not really intended for that. Of course you can do it if it really works for you, but it doesn't really align with the simple and slow method. Um, so keep it clean and clear. I also don't put any social engagements on my calendar at all. So this is strictly business. Of course, you can have a social one if you want. <laughs> it doesn't have to be um, separate, but I prefer mine separate. And I also colour code with different colour pens um, for different businesses or different projects. So it's really clear on my calendar. So I have sovereign business, I have sacred business, and I have my holistic healing. So they're three different colour codes. Now, you can do that within your existing business for different projects, or you might have multiple businesses go on the go like I do. Okay, so there's sort of the basic principles of how to use this calendar. Um, so when you're marking out according to the cycles each month, the first thing after you've done your intention and actions is to mark down well firstly your menstrual cycle if that feels true for you and if you can predict it if you can't predict it that's okay the rhythm might one day come um, and if you don't have menstruation then you can still start to tune into what is your natural cycle of downtime each month so each month when we do bleed that's our downtime. So it might be one day or two days or three days, whatever the period of time is for you to really, I guess, immerse yourself in what you're letting go of and what you're creating for the next cycle. So you can block those days out. All I do is actually put a little um, circle, solid circle on my menstrual days each month. And usually I'll block out one to two days. It doesn't mean that I do nothing work-wise. It just means that I don't want to schedule things at that time if I can at all help it. And sometimes, actually often, the universe tells me, sorry, you're not having downtime then. <laughs> you actually need to be working because in that state, of course, we're highly intuitive and quite psychic as well, very in tune with the earth. So sometimes working at that time can be a good thing but do mark it in because it's part of your natural rhythm the second thing you want to mark down is 
you want to look at what are your holidays. Now, you might obviously may not have holidays every single month, but I do know some people who have complete downtime every single month or every six weeks, so kind of a mini holiday. But you want to make sure that they're blocked out. Now, in terms of the whole year, the best time for holidays is Pisces, which we're currently in now at the end of Pisces, um, because that's the time of letting go. That's the time of really refining what I want to create for the new cycle. So having some time to yourself is great at that time of year. Of course, most people have their holidays <laughs> around Christmas, which is actually not the best time because that's Sagittarius and Capricorn, man. That's out there really serving people in a big way and reaping res rewards from that. You also want to put down your work slots or your work days and you can do that in whatever way you want. You know, you might actually have a cross through the whole day if you've got some, you know, could be a whole day of seeing clients or whatever. You also might want to block out whole days for marketing or whole days for finances. Maybe you do that one day a month. So what you're doing here is you're setting the framework, you're setting the priorities that don't shift each month and everything else starts to work around that. Your business, your life, your friends, your social engagements, all that stuff will reshuffle around these signposts that you set. Now this is often what happens with uh, solo entrepreneurs because they may not have a fixed schedule, they lose time very easily. And by that I mean if someone needs something from them, they just do it because they don't actually have, well, I have to be at work nine to five, so otherwise I don't get paid. So for a lot of us, it's, we're not living that life. Therefore, we have to be really strict about what time we're putting aside for certain activities as a regular rhythm. So that's your framework. And it might be something that is, pre, you know, is consistent each month. You have certain days for this, you have a certain number of days for clients each week, you have your two days of menstrual downtime, whatever. Then it comes to, we come to the non-consistent things like launches and events. So launches and events could be any time, but how do you know what time, when to plan them? Well, of course, you listen to the cycles. Now, I'll give you one example. Now, where is it? Okay, so the best time to launch a new product, generally speaking, for most products and services, is around the, the last quarter of the full moon building like building to the full moon. That's not the last quarter, that's the first quarter. Anyway, it's when the, the full moon is waxing rather than waning. So that means that people's emotional energy is building. If you launch something big on a new moon, they're not feeling much as much emotional energy. Now, this can work really well for certain products and services. So especially maybe if you're offering um, feminine journeys or women's programs or things like that, New Moon might be perfect for that. So you don't always have to launch on the full moon. But as a general rule, you want to make sure that people's energy is waxing, not waning. So... The other thing to keep in mind in relation to launches and events is, of course, the theme of the month. Now, for example, I have um, my Sacred Money Blueprint program coming up and I'm launching that in Taurus. Now, Taurus is, is an earth sign. It's very much about money, pleasure, physical pleasures, material possessions, building foundations, creating value, tangible value. So for a money-based program, this is pretty good. You know, you want to be launching in a sign where people are wired 
to money or wired to creating something of substance. Now, for example, if I launched that sort of program in Pisces, where people are not at all concerned <laughs> with material uh, possessions or making money, their energy is actually going way out far and wide, like exploring new possibilities and really tuning into the greatest psychic realm that we live in, co-creation, all those big out there sort of uh, concepts that are energetic based. That's not really the time to be launching something that is about earthy, practical money stuff. So when it comes to launching your products and services by theme of the month, you want to really tune into what is the theme of what you're offering. And you can plan this out for the whole year. Now, does anyone have any curly questions around um, products or services that they're not sure what month would suit that theme? You all got your theme sorted? No. <laughs> I, uh, Nat, I, I, if I'm uh, going to do something related to uh, dance or exercise or something like that, then I'm going to a, a new place. Well, how, can you show some light, okay. shine some light on that? That's a good question. When I should be doing it? Yep. So, okay, before I answer that question, I should also highlight that there's not only one month, there's not only one theme throughout the whole year that you can launch <laughs> your product or service. But you want to align with the theme, the best themes as much as possible. So for dance or exercise, which is body-based, Taurus is mm. perfect because Taurus is all about sensuality. It's about feeling the pleasures of life, really touching the body, enjoying physical pleasures. Mm. Taurus is a great one. However, for something like dance, um, that would also be great in a fire sign like Leo, creativity, you know. Okay. Um, having some fun, you know, mm. it's all about fun. And so yeah. you can see now that there's not just one fit. But depending on your timing, you want to go with what works best for you. So when you say my timing, it's about my cycle when I tune into that. Uh, but if I'm doing it on a weekly basis, I mean, how do I choose the day that I want to do it and that sort of thing? Well, okay, so that's a little bit different. So there's two things here. One is um, if you're launching something new, so this is a new launch for you, right? So this is a mm -hmm. big deal. So you want to really get the timing of the theme right as much as possible. So, But when, once you have launched and it's a weekly ongoing class, you can choose the day... If it's every week, you don't need to choose anything but versus, uh, sorry, other than your own intuition about what feels right mm. and what works. Yeah, right. that's basically, however, yeah, so I have done that. Mm. Yeah, however, if it was a monthly class, you might go, right, I want to make this a full moon class. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good idea because I'm thinking that I might do something once a month, yep. uh, another thing that is related to dance. Okay, thank you. That's yeah. great. Good question. Any others? Give me, throw me a challenge. Well, it's not so much a challenge. I was listening to you about the money cycle, but I actually didn't really understand what you said. Oh, the money cycle? So can you reiterate it? Um, I was just saying that, so for one of my programs, which is the Sacred Money Blueprint, which is money-based. Mm. Right, I'm, yeah. I'm launching that in Taurus, which is right, okay. quite emphasised on money and value. So people okay. Yeah, that way. Right. So um, the other thing that, that I, I was wondering as well is not just using the month as you mentioned, but also looking at when the moon moves into various um, various signs as well, um, and utilizing it. So, for example, if you you can't necessarily choose Taurus month because you've got other commitments, that maybe you could use a Taurus when the moon is in Taurus. It gives you this uh, like a, a backup in like energy. To, um, to utilise that time. Yeah, if you can't use Taurus as the month, you might be able to use Taurus like somewhere else. Great point. Awesome. 
you're so right because mm. but what i would suggest is you do um either taurus new moon or taurus full moon mm. Mm. okay so um try and look in this case you'd look for a taurus full moon which can happen in any month yeah mm. okay cool i'm glad you brought that up good one thank you me all right me <laughs> is that you jill it's me. Oh, I can see your feet. <laughs> I can't see the redhead and turn it around, so I'll turn the video off. Oh, we can hear you. That's good. Um, I want to launch a, a recipe membership page. Yep. And I'm looking to see what the best date would be. And it sounds like May, since it's healthy and food and... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I would go for, um, okay, so you've got in Taurus, you've got coming up, depends, are you ready to go in the next eight weeks? Yes. Okay, so you've got a Taurus new moon on the 6th, in Taurus, on the 6th of May, or you've also got on the 22nd of April, you've got a full moon in Scorpio in Taurus so you could align with both the moon and the and the, the zodiac theme but the theme enough alone would be enough because you have to remember with the launch um, you know a launch isn't just one day it's like you got to market at least two three four weeks in advance so you're pretty much looking at the whole month of Taurus anyway mm. but you could just keep those two in mind the Scorpio form oh, and put Start in that Scorpio moon, um, Scorpio 22nd and really punch it out in, in 6th of May. Yeah, that's it. You could, um, cause Scorpio full moons are great for um, highlighting people's, where people need to really focus their attention, what they've been neglecting. Um, yeah. so I wouldn't generally, I wouldn't suggest launching on a full moon in Scorpio. <laughs> Because people are really in their shit usually on a Scorpio full moon. But um, what you could do is really leverage that energy to excavate what people need to see that's going to make them go, wow, I need this recipe membership. Okay. So you yep. can look at it that way. That's yep. just one way. Why? So that would be the why. That April would be, would be the why. Yep. And, um, and 6th of May would be, well, this. This is yeah, so it depends. You wouldn't have to, you don't have to launch it on the Taurus new moon, but you're kind of getting um, I I wouldn't I wouldn't say that's a bad idea anyway. It just depends how you'd want to theme the launch as well. And you know, oh, you know it'd be my birthday. Hey? It'd be my, birthday. It's my birthday. So oh, perfect. Do it on your birthday. Yeah. Make a buzz it and buzz around that. Birth. Yeah, tenth is my birthday, so would be a good opportunity. Great. Yeah, good one. Cool. Your question? Yes, I've got another one. Yeah, go for it. I'm being greedy now. <laughs> go for it. It's all good. Um, I'm also tentatively, I started out um, just putting it out there at the moment, um, running uh, PST masterclasses. So, Applied psychosomatics, and um, was wondering when would be the best time of the month or the moon cycle to put that out there because it's, it's practical, but it's also growth in um, identity growth. So, so which, which part of the moon cycle? Yeah. So what I would do in that case, I would be planting the seed again about the why in the new moon. And then over yep. that two weeks building to the full moon, I'd be launching on the full moon. Because it's, it's probably going to be bi-monthly or monthly. Yep. Mm -hmm. So for the initial launch, I'd be yeah, working, built, working with the energy as the moon waxes in for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you could actually run them on the full moon. So it depends um, in terms of actually delivering a masterclass in something like, you know, personal development like you're offering. Um, 
the full moon energy can be great because people can um you know they're usually more enthusiastic they're more likely to turn up for things um but it can also trigger stuff so for personal development it can be really good um because you can start to uh yeah excavate work with that energy to illuminate and excavate what's missing okay thank you Does that help very much cool um would, would there be any recommendation when to start that? what? Uh, in terms what? of what month? Yeah. How, are you ready to go? How soon are you ready to go? Um, or re probably a couple of weeks away. Um, I would favour Aries over Taurus. Mm -hmm. If you're ready in a couple of weeks, I'd go for Aries. Let's have a look. Um, so if you're ready in a couple of weeks, I would be aiming towards the end of Aries because the, the moon is, is waxing then. Mm -hmm. um, so after the 7th of April, it starts to build again. So I'd be aiming for that. Because Aries yeah. is, got, is, people are aligned to taking action in Aries. So it's really good for launches. Cool. And they want to explore new stuff. You know, they're just like, okay, yep, I know I need to do something new for this 12 month cycle. And I'm, you know, they have some awareness of what was missing in the last 12 month cycle. So, so can I ask um, if that's the case, if I'm going to run a, a masterclass or a um, uh, applied psychosomatics over the 12 months, it would probably be much more functional to set it up as a program over the 12 months, starting in April yep. and finishing in March. Absolutely. I, I think that's ideal. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Done. Cool. Yeah, 12 month, month programs, ideal to start in Aries. You're starting at the beginning. Not essential, but it's great to start at the start. Hey, Natty. Hello. Hi. I wanted to. I wanted to. The the ones you put up before, like the fire, air, earth, and water. I didn't quite cap, capture the um the elements that they were about. Can you? Do you mind putting that screen back up? Oh yeah, sure. Please. So um, just so everyone knows as well, this this um diagram is in the the ebook which is part of the natural cycle. Oh, is it? Yeah, so it's all in there. So you do get a copy of this. But yeah, is that the one you mean? Business. Oh, okay. Cycle. All right. Well, I'll look at the yearbook then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Good question. Awesome. Any others? No? All right. So, um... So we've looked at, so far we've looked at um, planning for, first of all, you want to plan your menstrual cycle each month. Then you actually want to put in your holidays and your de designated or dedicated work days. Um, and they can be work days face to face with clients or they can be, you know, days that you work on certain other aspects of your business. And then around that, you put in your launches and your events. So moving on, there's actually not too much more that I use these, these natural cycle planners for other than at any time, at any point in time that I need to, you know, in terms of if it's the current day, I'll see where the moon is at. I'll just look at the calendar, which is why I've designed it that way. Um, so you look at the date, oh, okay, right, we're almost at a full moon or we're approaching a new moon, whatever. So that also, in terms of my day-to-day -day operations, informs what I do in my business. So if we're moving towards a new moon, um, that's when I really need to get introspective about, okay, there's a new cycle coming. You know, there's a dying off and something new needs to be birthed. Because on a new moon that's the ideal time to begin new projects. So 
then you've got the two weeks building up to the full moon and at the full moon that's when you're wanting to complete projects that's the optimal time to be completing and then after that you're sort of you're again starting to go okay so what needs to be birthed what's starting to die off what needs to be birthed for the next cycle which you, which crystallizes again on the new moon so each month we have the cycle going on begin new projects complete projects begin new projects complete projects now then we get thrown a curveball and that is the eclipse happens a lunar eclipse or even a solar eclipse now this is the same kind of thing which is the end of something and the beginning of something but in a much more significant way because eclipses don't happen every month so when there is an eclipse it's an upgrade you're being upgraded so you need to elevate how you're operating in your business so this is when there's an eclipse that's why i refer to it as the time to start new operations how you operate because if you think of you know if if it's a solar eclipse for example the sun is completely blocked out so from for a moment there's no light coming so it's like the closing of a chapter and as it moves through it opens a new doorway so that means you're closing the chapter on an old way of operating so it's really good to be aware of this when the eclipses happen because you can leverage that energy you can roll with it you can benefit from going from consciously going oh okay how am i going to operate differently now and if you're anything like me i'm pretty sensitive to the moon so moon cycles and eclipses and everything so i usually feel it anyway i'm slapped across the head with it you know what i need to let go of so you might be um i was going to say lucky but i don't think it's very lucky sometimes but sometimes we're naturally told and other times we really need to crystallize it consciously what is it that we are going to change from this eclipse in us how we operate so when you see on your calendar eclipse coming you know that something significant in your pattern your personal pattern of behavior is changing and that influences your business in a big way it can be a really significant upgrade can i can i just add something to that as well just to um just to clarify with you with the solar eclipse it's also about our identity Hence what you were talking about with, um, you know, what needs to be closed. Yep. Is that one way of looking at it? Like closing a chapter? With a solar eclipse, yes. Um, it is more... Mm. And then with the lunar, yeah. And it is more about how we're operating in the external world. In the external, I, yeah, okay. What, how we present to the world. I wouldn't say okay, and then, yes, presenting, but more so operating. Yeah. Operating, okay. And then with the lunar eclipses, you didn't really talk about that. Are you, were you going to go into it or am I jumping in the gun a bit? I was just speaking about eclipses generally. It's still a doorway, closing one door mm. after another. And there's just a slightly different emphasis for each. So solar, as you said, is more outer, external based change. Mm -hmm. And yeah. lunar is more internal shifting. Internal. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, uh, did you see a question from um, Angelica? Oh. Um, with workshops, is it the same principle of running them when moon is waxing as people want to learn them? Uh, yeah, I think I understand your uh, question, Angelica. I can't he obviously can't hear you. Your mic's not working. Um, yes, so people... People are wanting to expose things around as they build towards a full moon and they're more likely to take action. So that's why I said earlier in the call that um, the full moon definitely aligns with buying power, 
you know, people feel like, yeah, I want to take action as opposed to a new moon. But you could also say, I suppose that people want to learn more then. Um, it could go, it could honestly go either way. Like, as I said, if you're doing like a really deep women's journey or something, a new moon could be best, mm -hmm. especially for running the actual workshop. Um, I would say new moon all the way for something like that. Mm. It really depends what you're teaching and the, and the essence of it. I hope that helps, but ask any, any other. Okay, cool. Great. All right, any other questions before we start to wind up? Any questions about the planner, how to use it, not sure about it, comments about it, anything you want to change? Any comments at all? When are you going to make it electronic so we can integrate it into a calendar <laughs> with the one we work with instead of being hard copy? <laughs> oh, no, no, it is electronic. You can enter in PDF. It's a PDF the calendar. Yeah, but is it workable in your in, a, in an online calendar like iCal or Google Calendar? Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm putting the full moon in and the new moon and when it moves and waxes and wanes and, you know, having all those symbols all over the calendar, that would be amazing. I know, wouldn't it? Um, honestly, this is why I created the planner in the first place because I could not find what I wanted anywhere, not, it, not really mm -hmm. close. Um, so, yeah, I haven't found anything like this and um, I'm continually improving it based on how I use it and the feedback I get from everyone who does. So your feedback is absolutely welcome and... and um, appreciated because we can all use more intuitive planning wouldn't you agree more intuitive planning that's simple and slow now um, I'm also going to talk about uh, the 12 cycle blueprint program which I'm um, it just started running actually we have one group going through at the moment and I've realized how important it is that people have support and they have a group to go through this 12 cycle process with. So I'm just going to briefly explain what this process is about and what's on offer if you would like that kind of support. So to share my screen again. All right. So the 12 cycle blueprint, as, as I said, it is a group coaching program that lasts for the full 12 cycles. It's 12 months of monthly coaching. Now, each month we actually get together at the turn of the cycle. Um, so, you know, for this, it's actually tomorrow for the current group, but there'll be other time slots for, for the next group. Um, but we're in between Pisces and Aries. So this is all about planning for the next cycle. And so we work together in a, in a very small, intimate group. So there's only four of us. And we actually share our intention and actions for the month. And I give advice and guidance on how to really get the most out of each month for, for you individually in your business, whatever you happen to be launching or where you're at in your business right now. So it also includes an interactive Facebook group and you get monthly worksheets as well. Um, and there's also um, something new that I'm integrating from this point onwards is accountability partners. So we come together as a group. You get coaching from me once a month, but then in between that, throughout the month, you, have, you partner up with someone else on the program and you actually help each other kick those goals that you set out to achieve each month. So it's just having someone with you as you work through the actions you need to take. I realized how essential this is because people don't do as well alone. And that's why most of the programs I run these days are group coaching programs. I do very little individual coaching now. Um, so there's huge benefit in going through this with a group. Um, so the price of the program is US 200 a month and you pay that monthly. For 12 months and for today only I'm offering a, a fast mover special which is 150 per month so if you decide today that you want to you want to run with this and you want to be part of um, a group for the 12 cycles um, that's the price for today only so 
this is something that's available to you as a support throughout the year. And obviously we'll be kicking off in Aries. So um, you can start the whole 12 cycles with support. And if you are keen, um, all you have to do is just send me an email at love at sacredbusiness.com.au or you can just stay on after this call and we'll have a quick chat about it. Okay, that's it from me. We've managed to squeeze it into one hour, almost exactly, but I do have two minutes for any other questions. Questions, comments, anything at all? Are you happy I just, with today? Yeah, I just wanted to say I'm sorry I came in really late. I was quite busy. <laughs> I didn't realise. I thought it was maybe at two. Um, so I, was, I don't know. We, sorry. I was going to say I will send out the recording to all of you. Uh, you that's do. one of my questions. Yeah. 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 And did you have um, some worksheets that were attached to this or is that attached to your course that you're offering? Um, no, so there are worksheets for the course I'm offering, but there's also the Natural Cycle Planner, which is a, a workbook. So that's where all the all the work sort of happens in that book. Um, yeah. So the link for that, I'll just bring it up. Um, if anyone wants to grab theirs now, so the Natural Cycle Calendar is available at your own intuitive price. So there's no fixed price, um, and I will post that link in the group now. Thank you. So everyone can access that there. So it's a it's an automatic download. So you get the files instantly. You can either complete the planner on your desktop um, via PDF. So it's a PDF fillable format. You can type in or you can print it off like I do. I prefer hard copy um, and I can scribble on it and whatever. So great. Thank you. Yeah, so the link's there for you in, chat, in the chat box there. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm so grateful for Thanks, one hour of time, <laughs> and I hope it was really useful. Hey, Natalie. It was great. Loved it. <laughs> hey, Natalie, I actually laminate mine so I can use a whiteboard marker on it. Oh, awesome. That's great. <laughs> very, very cool. I never thought of that. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Awesome. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 All right. Thanks, Jill. Glad you can make it. Blessings. Hopefully we catch up soon. Yes, we will. I'm going to give you a call. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Monique, are you there?